Hey everyone, welcome to the AZ104 exam preparation series. So how are your preparations going on? In case there is some topic that is killing you that you are not able to understand, do let me know in the comment section. You can also reach me at connectors at the rate thetechblackboard.com. But anyways, my friends, in today's video, I'm going to cover multiple questions on multiple topics. But there is one question in today's video that will make today's video really special and you will not find these kind of questions on the open internet. And that question is about the biceps. No, 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 not my biceps, but the Azure biceps. And as I said, this is the very latest topic in addition to the AZ104 syllabus. So that's why please watch the video till the very end very carefully as we cover this latest topic. So let's begin today's episode part 28 question number 166. So here you can read that the question is saying that you need to create an Azure storage account that meets the following requirement. So first requirement is that this should minimize the cost. Secondly, it should support hot, cool and archive blob tiers. And thirdly, it should provide the fault tolerance if a disaster affects the Azure region where this account resides. How should you complete the command? So here you can see that we are given with this command. This command is basically incomplete. So in this command, instead of these question marks, you have to choose the appropriate value from these two tables given here. And please note that each correct selection is worth one point. So here you can see that we are given with two parameters here, which relates to the command given here. First of all, we have to choose the correct value for the kind and then we have to choose the correct SKU. So let's check out what are the options given for this kind parameter. So we are given with file storage, then we have storage and lastly given with storage v2 and the correct answer for this parameter kind is storage v2. Then moving on to the SKU, we have options like standard GRS. We also have standard LRS and then we have standard RA GRS and then lastly premium LRS. And the correct value for this SKU should be the standard GRS. So basically the correct command by choosing all of these correct options will become something like this. So here you can see that we have AZ storage account create slash G rg1 and then we have this storage account here now the correct kind for the storage account is storage v2 and the correct sku is standard grs because this will fulfill all the requirements given here and friends it's super important to understand all of the options given under the azure storage redundancy so here you can read all about the azure redundancy options and I'm sure you understand what exactly is redundancy. So basically in the redundancy, what we are making sure is that in case one of our instance of our application or the storage account fails, then it should still be running using the other instances. And that essentially means that the Azure storage always stores multiple copies of your data so that it can be protected from the planned and unplanned events. So in case there is a crash or maybe some upgrade or some planned upgrade is there, then your application should not be impacted and you should always have happy customers. And not just that, my friends, you really need to grab attention and really understand what are the redundancy options in the primary region. So here we have locally redundant storage, which is the cheapest option. Then we also have zone redundant storage, which is ZRS. So here you can read what are the copies, what are the different types and numbers of copy that each option maintains and you can understand all the details here you can understand these options the primary region how exactly are these set up what are the different types of copies or number of copies that are maintained so all is given in this documentation but then my friends i've also seen many questions on the pricing aspect or the pricing part of all these redundancy options and for that i will give you one more documentation and that is given here, which is the Azure Blob Storage Pricing. So here you can understand all about the Azure Storage Pricing. And here you can see that we have recommended storage. We also have blob only storage and other options are also given here. And with each option, you can see the pricing information. Here you can see the LRS. You can also see ZRS, GRS and RAGRS. And you can also understand pricing in respect of various operations. So here you can see operations and the data transfer. You can also read about the data transfer pricing for the block blobs. And similarly, you can go through the entire documentation. Now, in case you're already wondering that how I'm going to remember all these pricing options do not worry easy 104 is an open book exam and that means you can open all the documentation in the microsoft learn in your real exam but then it's super important to understand where exactly to find the information so that's why i'm showing you the documentation the links are always provided in the description box and also before i jump to the next question please watch the question number 165 which was presented in the part 27 the previous part there also i've taken very important concepts on the azure storage accounts and now let's 
let's move on with the next question question number 167 so here you can see some instructions are given let's read the instruction it says that this question is a part of a series of questions that presents the same scenario and each question in this series contains a unique solution that might meet the stated goals and some question sets might have more than one correct solution while the others might not have a correct solution and after you answer a question in this section you will not be able to return to it as a result these questions will not appear in the review screen and the gist of all these instructions given here is that in these kind of questions you will normally be presented with three similar questions but with different solution and of course you have to pick the correct solution so first of all let's read the question it says that you have an azure virtual machine named vm1 now this vm1 was deployed by using custom azure resource manager templates named arm1 json and now you receive a notification that this vm vm1 will be affected by the maintenance and you need to move the vm1 to a different host immediately and the solution given is that from the update management blade you click enable does this solution meet the goal yes or no and friends this is the correct solution is that what you thought no unfortunately not so this is not the correct solution that's why no is the correct answer now in case you're wondering what is the correct solution well i took this question in quite some detail in the question number 131 to 133 which were taken in the part 21 of this az 104 series so from question number 131 to 133 you will see three more solution or three more variation of this question and of course you will understand what exactly is the correct answer and why we picked so but friends for now i can just tell you that the arm template concept is a very important concept and multiple questions are there in the AZ104 exam and actually not just the exam it's very important to understand the ARM templates because as an Azure admin you will be dealing with the ARM template quite often as these ARM templates are the core for the Azure deployment so here you can read and understand all about the Azure ARM templates that these ARM templates are essentially the JSON file or you can also say in the full form JavaScript object notation and also in case you do not know there is a latest happening in the ARM template section and this is what exactly is given here so here you can read that that we have introduced a new language named bicep that offers similar capabilities as arm templates but with the syntax that is easier to use and you know what friends of recently there are a lot of questions from the arm template section so that's why today i will present one question to start with azure bicep so watch the video till the very end so that you understand what is azure bicep i will give a lot of documentation and the structure so that you can really understand what is azure bicep but for now let's quickly jump to the question number 168 and that says that you have an azure storage account named storage one and you plan to use the easy copy to copy the data to the storage one and you need to identify the storage services in the storage one to which you can copy the data which storage service should you identify now your options are option a blob and file only option b blob table and queue only option c file and table only option d blob file table and queue only and lastly option e file only and the correct answer for this question is option a blob and file only now friends the easy copy command is a command line utility that you can use to copy the blobs or the files to and from a storage account and you can read all about the easy copy in this documentation you can understand what are the syntaxes and what are the various options for the easy copy so here you can see that we have easy copy bench copy we also have env which is environment jobs and lot of other options are given here but i think to start with you can actually jump onto this documentation which says get started with easy copy it's a really important concept in case you're dealing with the azure storage account and then my friends once you have understood what is the azure storage and what are the different variations of azure storage what are the different pricing model you can also understand on this documentation what is easy copy and how to use it so here you can read all about the easy copy command what are the synopsis and other related articles and then coming back to the question so that you understand why we have not picked the other options see the option b which is the blob table and queue only option c file and table only and option d blob file table and queue only does not support the table and the queue storage services and then i will come to the option e here which says file only now you have to understand that the az copy you will also read in the documentation as well that the az copy supports file storage services as well as the blob storage services that's why the perfect or the correct answer would be selecting blob and file both of the options 
Now let's jump on to the next question. Question number 169. The question is saying that you plan to deploy an Azure Virtual Machine based on a basic template stored in Azure Resource Manager or ARM template library. What can you configure during the deployment of the template? Select only one correct answer. Your options are option A, the disk assigned to the virtual machine, option B, the operating system, option C, the resource group, and option D, the size of the virtual machine. And the correct answer for this question is option A, the disk assigned to the virtual machine. And friends, it's really important to understand that when you deploy a resource by using the templates or the ARM templates, you can mention the resource group for the deployments. And now that you have defined the resource group, now this resource group is a container for the Azure resources and makes it really easier to manage all the resources. And just a quick tip in case you do not know, all the Azure resources must reside under a resource group. And now let's move on to the question number 170 this is the very first question that i have introduced on the very latest concept azure bicep so let's read the question question is saying that you have an azure subscription that contains a resource group named rg1 now you plan to create a storage account named storage one and you have a bicep file named file one and you need to modify the file one so that it can be used to automate the deployments of storage one to rg1 which property should you modify your options are option A, scope, option B, kind, option C, SKU, and option D, location. And the correct answer for this question is option A, scope. So now let me give you more details on the Azure Bicep and why scope is the correct answer. So please understand and listen to this very carefully that to modify the Bicep or the file one given here, you have to automate the deployment from storage one to RG1. And in order to do so, you have to change or modify the scope property. And this scope property, my friends, in the Bicep file specifies the resource group where the resource should actually be deployed. And just so you know that by default, when you create a resource group in a bicep file it's actually deployed to the current resource group however if you want to deploy the resource to a different resource group you need to specify the scope property in the bicep file now let me give you multiple microsoft documentation so that you can have a structured study on azure bicep and of course we will start with what is azure bicep so you can read that here that the azure bicep is a domain specific language that uses declarative syntax to deploy Azure resources. And in a BICEP file, you can define the infrastructure you want to deploy to the Azure and then use the file throughout the deployment lifecycle to repeatedly deploy your infrastructure. And here you can understand what are the benefits of the BICEP. So first of all, the BICEP support all the resource type and the API version. Then it has a simpler syntax when compared to the JSON files. And that you can also observe here. So you can see a code snippet here, which is presented in the BICEP format and also in the JSON format. So here you can see the JSON format is actually quite long, but the BICEP format is really condensed, really efficient. And that's why no wonder Microsoft is promoting the BICEP files. And once you understand my friends, what is the BICEP file? What are its benefits? Then you can come on to this documentation here that will give you a basic understanding when comparing the JSON file and the BICEP for templates. So here you can see the comparison between the BICEP and the JSON files. And of course, in case you want, you can go to the Bicep Playground. This is the Bicep Playground. Here you can really understand and work on the Azure Bicep. And in case you want, you can also have some sample templates given here. And once you have done all these documentation, what is Bicep? What are the benefits of Bicep? What is the comparison between JSON and Bicep? Then you can come on to this documentation here and really understand the structure and syntax of Bicep files. So I hope I have given you sufficient documentation to get started with Azure Bicep concept. And friends, I really request you to press the like button. It takes a lot of time and effort and research to bring up all these relevant documentation to you. Okay, so I hope you really like the concepts and the questions that we took today. And in case you're looking for the PDF files with all the questions and the answers for all the Microsoft certification and also the Amazon AWS certification, then please consider joining the YouTube community membership. You can use the join button to do so. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.